In today's episode, Emma and I, we're gonna find out once and for all which of these diffusers here is best used when you have your hot shoe flash on your camera, on TTL, and nowhere to bounce. Let's find out. Let's find out. No, you stay here. I go find out. You model first. Action! Hey, I know you guys. The first question you're going to be asking me is what if there's no flash? So we're going to do a baseline shot with no flash of Emma. Going to make every setting as consistent as possible at ISO of 200, F2.8, and a Kelvin of 5000. Let's take a baseline shot. And now, with a hot shoe flash on ETTL, let's face it to the front. We're gonna meter to zero. The second diffuser, or was it the first diffuser? The built-in white color flap that you have here. So we're gonna point our flash just like this. Same setting, meter to zero. And there's a famous rule that's called Famous Five that says that, rule number two, it says that if you make your light bigger, the light will become softer. So what if I put on a bigger flap to this? So this is going to be bigger and softer. Let's find out. Same settings. I'm going to meter to zero and I'll tell you why we meter to zero. Next up, the famous light sphere. Well, this is working on the principle that the bigger the light, the softer the light, and this is really big here, but sadly, it's kind of small on the mount, and I had to change flash to fit it, and I had to change camera as well. So now I'm using a Nikon, but the settings are all the same. The ISO is the same, the F number is the same, the Kelvin is the same, it's still on TTL. I'm still gonna meter to zero, and I'll tell you why I meter to zero. Now, we're gonna do it two different orientation, facing the front first, and facing upright. Let's find out. Facing the front first. Upright. And finally, this diffuser here looks a little bit like the damp diffuser, but it's not. It looks a little bit like a toilet seat with a lot of flaps. So I guess the first thing we're gonna do Back on the Canon system now is to fire it flash direct and then I'm going to tilt it up and then maybe open this and close this and take another shot like this. Let's find out. Facing front, F2.8, Kelvin 5000. Toilet seat open. Toilet seat close the other seat open and maybe turn this way I wouldn't know let's try this at an angle wait I finally see the virtue of this this is so cool because you can now turn this to the back and then open this and have more light to the back let's find out and bounce off a wall if you have a wall and finally why do I meter to zero? If you watch the previous episode, when you're outdoor, you do not want your flash to be too harsh. Let me just meter it to negative one and show you what happens with the same setup. Just gonna point it this way. Well, if you compare two shots, you will notice that the shadow gets darker on the one with the negative one. Great, we've got all the shots done. Let's compare them and rank them from the lowest to the highest. But hey, before we start, let me share with you what you want to look for for a good modifier. A good modifier will not give you reflected highlight on the forehead, the cheek or the nose. These are called specular highlights, not good. Second thing, you do not want to have helmet strap shadow. Yes, this shadow here is called the helmet strap shadow. The hell is that thing under your chin? Now, you want them as thin as possible and you want them as feathered as possible. So this is not good, this is better. 
Number three, you want to make sure that the photo doesn't look flashed. Number four, you want to make sure that the diffuser kind of warm up your subject with a natural skin tone like this. So this is not too good, this is better. Having said that, I'm going to rank this from the lowest, lousiest diffuser right up to the best that you can have. Well, I believe you're not surprised that natural lighting is perhaps the lousiest looking because the face looks kind of dark. And apart from that, when you have your subject not lit up, she shares the same background light as the background. So notice the somewhat one or two stop underexposure on the face. Second lowest on the ranking, surprisingly, is with your flash pointed up and that small internal flap pulled out. Now, I would have thought it's the direct flash that would suck, but no, it turned out like so. Because look at the shadow under the chin. What you're trying to do is get a more diffuse shadow under the chin. But I kind of like the warm tone of this diffuser here. Ranking third from the bottom, direct flash is not that bad if you don't have a diffuser and nowhere to bounce out though. Notice how it lights up the subject's face and the shadow under the chin, surprisingly, is quite feathered and diffuse. And ranking number four from the bottom would be the big bounce cut stuck to the flesh with the flesh pointed upward. While the face looks well lit, the shadow under the chin is just a little bit too thick and not feathered. So it looks kind of obvious that you flash this. So I think we can safely conclude that the bigger the bounce cut you stick to your flesh, the bigger the helmet strap shadow is going to be. And ranking number 5 from the bottom would be the light sphere pointed up. As you can see, the shadow under the chin is not diffuse, it's quite hard and it's a little bit bright even though we meter to zero. But the white balance is lovely. But notice the specular highlight on the forehead is quite prominent. And the third best diffuser to use, well, let's not call it the toilet seat diffuser anymore because it's actually called a whale tail. Is to have your whale tail diffuser pointing up. Lovely warm white balance. A little bit of specular highlight on the nose and the T-zone. The shadow under the chin is still quite prominent, but it doesn't look so flashed. Second best diffuser to use would be the whale tail pointed direct. Notice how thin the shadow under the chin is and the warm color is beautiful. And strangely, there's not so much a specular highlight on her forehead and the nose. And viewers, the best diffuser that you can use, despite the fact that it's big, it's kind of ugly, would be having your light sphere pointed direct. Notice how thin and kind of diffuse the helmet strap shadow is. It's very natural. The color is very warm. And apart from that, you don't get specular highlight at all from your subject's face. So there you have it. If you don't mind the size and the weight, the light sphere is the best diffuser to use. But if you're like me, you hate carrying a diffuser and making things look ugly, you just have to point your flesh to the front, increase your white balance above 5,005, you're gonna be good. That's it, that was the last shot. <laughs> the camera just died. Meter to negative one. Oh, f no cut. <laughs> this is what a day, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs>